Good evening, brothers and sisters. Welcome to Divine Mercy Weekend at St. Henry Catholic Church in Gresham, Oregon. My name is Father Charles Zock. Our greeters are Jim and Peggy, Joe and Barb are our musicians, and Jeannie is our reader. Let us begin in song. Thank you. 
together in the Lord's name, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Amen. On this Divine Mercy Sunday, we call to mind our sins and recite together our penitential confidior. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. people you have made your own. Increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed, that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. the Acts of the Apostles. The community of believers was of one heart and mind, and no one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they had everything in common. With great power, the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great favor was accorded to all of them. There was no needy person among them, for those who owned property or houses would sell them, bring the proceeds of the sale, and put them at the feet of the apostles, and when they were distributed to each according to his need. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we obey his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome, for whoever is begotten by God conquers the world. And the victory that conquers the world is our faith. Who indeed is the victor over the world? but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. This is the one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by water alone, but by water and blood. The Spirit is the one that testifies, and the Spirit is the truth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. No one tell the world Jesus lives again in Galilee he promises to meet you once again all of you
reading from the 20th chapter of the Holy Gospel according to John. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked, where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord, and Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Who sins you forgive, they are forgiven. Who sins you retain, are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the nail marks, and put my hand in his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book, but these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Jesus spent 33 years on this earth. 33 of those were ministering to his disciples, teaching them, showing them the path, the way, the truth, and the life. John's Gospel spends half of the Gospel on the last three days of his life. And the rest are post-resurrection appearances. That gives us pause to reflect on how important the passion is and how important the resurrection appearances are. We have on the walls of our main church the 14 stations of the cross, the passion represented in what is called the Via Crucis, the way of the cross. But there are 14 stations of the resurrection called the stations of light, the Via Lucis. That's what we concentrate on during these days of Easter before the Ascension and Pentecost. It's important we read and listen to these stories. They're important. They start with Jesus rising from the dead, and the 14th station of light is the risen Lord sends the Holy Spirit. The other ones you know. 
the women find an empty tomb. Mary Magdalene had the Lord appeared to her. She runs and proclaims to Peter and John. The Lord appears as a stranger on the road to Emmaus. And they recognize him in the breaking of the bread. The Lord appears to the disciples in Jerusalem, which is part of our text today. The Lord gives them the power to forgive. The Lord strengthens the faith of Thomas, which we'll chat about a little bit. The risen Lord says to Peter, feed my lambs. The Lord sends the disciples to the whole world. The Lord ascends into heaven. Mary waits in the upper room with the disciples until the Holy Spirit comes to them. Today we concentrate on Thomas. Thomas is every man, every woman. Thomas was missing, was absent. When the ten apostles were present in the upper room behind a locked door for fear of the Jews, and Jesus appeared to them. Where was Thomas? We don't know. Why was he absent? Once again, Thomas represents each one of us during our life. On occasion, we are absent. When we are absent from the assembly, we miss what's happening. When we're absent from our families, we miss something that has happened. Thomas, when he finally arrived, doubted his own friends, his fellow apostles, when they gave testimony that Jesus is risen. He wouldn't even trust his dear friends. He just said, unless I can see it with my own eyes and put my hands into the wounds, I will not believe. Once again, a little bit of Thomas in each one of us. And perhaps some of us will say, without seeing you, we still believe. Thomas was approached by divine mercy. The next week, Thomas was present. Jesus came through, though the doors were locked. Came right up to Thomas and said, Thomas, put your hands into my wounds. <clears throat> Thomas finally got his requirement to believe. And what did he say? He gave a profession of faith that resonates down through the ages. My Lord and my God. In some cultures, when the priest holds up the host and holds up the chalice, people will respond, my Lord and my God. It's a wonderful tradition. The Kyrios, my Lord, and Theos, my God. Easter continues in our lives where we need to have eyes to see and ears to hear the 14 Via Lucis, the way of light in our own life. Jesus is appearing to each one of us to accommodate us with divine mercy. He says in so many different ways, the resurrected Lord does, Put your hands into my wounds. Be not unbelieving, but believe. That's why we in the Catholic tradition maintain the crucifix, lest we forget. Divine mercy starts with passion, death, and then the post-resurrection divine <clears throat> mercy.
I wish to share a story about a four-year-old. This family had been a neighbor to an elderly couple. The elderly man had lost his wife. He was in terrible grief. The little boy, four years old, saw him and heard him weeping on the front porch. Before the mother could catch him, he went into the man's yard, went up onto the porch, and sat in his lap. And then when he came home, the mother said, well, what did you say to him? I didn't say anything. I just helped him cry. That's an innocent showing us what divine mercy is. So today we want to revel in divine mercy. Identify it in our lives. And then what we do with divine mercy, we repent, we rejoice, and we report. All three are essential qualities of divine mercy. Repent. Thomas certainly did that, and so did Peter. He couldn't wait for the opportunity to repent. One day, the fishermen saw Jesus on the shore. John announced to everyone, it's the Lord. He was making breakfast for them. And Peter jumped out of the boat, couldn't wait to come up to the Lord and repent for his denial and to be one again with Christ. And then we are to rejoice and say in our heart of hearts, my Lord and my God. And then as Jesus sent out the disciples, go out into the whole world, we too are to report. That would be the completion of divine mercy. Repent. Rejoice and report. Let us stand as we recite our Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, God, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We have not seen, but still believe. With confident faith, we bring our concerns before divine mercy. For the newly baptized and newly received, may their faith be a reminder of God's presence himself to all of us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the world, that God's divine mercy brings healing and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the elderly, may we respond to their loneliness and dependency with the kindness of God the Father. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For married couples who model love that is committed, steadfast, and true, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a spirit of generosity that flows from this community to share our goods with those who have less, share our compassion with those who suffer, and share our wisdom with those who wish to learn. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our brothers.
brothers and sisters who have died, especially Charles Caron. May God raise them up on the last day and for our personal prayers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. As we continue the year of honoring St. Joseph, the patron of the Universal Catholic Church, we pray. O God, who in your inexpressible providence were pleased to choose St. Joseph as spouse of the most holy mother of your son, grant, we pray, that we who revere him as our protector on earth may be worthy of his heavenly intercession through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. This will become for us the bread of life. Through this mystery of water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. This will become our spiritual drink. Amen. Lord, wash away my iniquity, cleanse me of my sin. Sisters and brothers, we pray together that this, our sacrifice, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people and of those you have brought to new birth, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this day above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death and by rising restored our life. Therefore overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, 
graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night when he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her spouse, with Thomas and the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Henry and Cunegunda and all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Alexander and Peter, our bishops, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you, in your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
And now at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you all. Let us share a sign of peace.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. Several brief announcements. Uh, first of all, the Oregon State Health Authority has moved us to a high risk in Multnomah County, uh, which was supposed to be 25% capacity. That didn't apply to churches because we've been doing such a wonderful job of mitigating during COVID. So we're still at 50% capacity and we'll continue what we're doing for at least another month. So just so you were clear, I wasn't breaking any laws. I like executive privilege, <laughs> <laughs> so I will work with it. So at any rate, First Communion is coming up on May 1st and 2nd at the 5, 11 o'clock and 1.30 Masses. We have over 60 candidates for First Communion. Archbishop Vlasny will be here on May 26th for our 45 youth candidates for confirmation. A little heads up about this summer, uh, every weekend is pretty packed. We have 15 weddings. We have a lot of funerals that were postponed. So if you need to schedule something, uh, call way ahead, okay? Today was busy, for instance, eight o'clock mass, baptism at 10, um, noon wedding, uh, first confessions this afternoon, regular confessions, and then mass. Of course, we're nothing but filled with joy. <laughs> the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God.